Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this six game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings. Before we get into it, if you do enjoy the content at any point in this video, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. I would gladly, gladly appreciate that. Uh, YouTube continues to tell me about 60% of my audience is not subscribed. So if that is you and you feel like I offer you any value, if you feel like the stats and the statistics and all the advice I'm going over is valuable, uh, all that I ask is that you hit that subscribe button. It takes one second, it's free, and I do greatly appreciate the support I've gotten so far. We are well on the way to 400 subscribers, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, the faster we can get there, the better. I want to continue to grow and continue providing you guys with some valuable insight. And then if you are interested, I do offer further content over on Patreon, link below in the description. If you're really getting serious about NBA DFS and you're playing every single night, I would highly recommend that. Uh, if you're more of a casual player and you're just looking to play for fun, no problem at all because I will be having some free content on the channel every single day. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and start breaking down this one today. First game on the slate tonight, Denver taking on Boston. Uh, right now we have a 221.5 over under with a three point spread in favor of the Boston Celtics. So not exactly the fastest pace game in the world, but it is, is expected to stay close, which is half the battle oftentimes when dealing with a good team like Denver or Boston. So, um, And then not to mention, we do have some injuries to go over here. So there's no Will Barton. There's no Paul Millsap. There's no Gary Harris. Monte Morris is listening to questionable. P.J. Dozier is out. Um, and then on the Boston side, there's no Marcus Smart. And Daniel Tice is listed as questionable. So, um, you know, some pretty relevant injury news here. Um, that could really open up some value. We already have a bunch of value open on the Denver side. I can tell you right now with usage opening up and or minutes, Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray are both going to become big priorities for me due to the fact that, you know, Will Barton and Paul Millsap are both out. I think both these guys are going to take on a big load in this one um, as far as their usage and what they're responsible for. So both these guys pop up the page to me immediately on the slate. Uh, especially Michael Porter Jr. At only 5'8", I think that's way too cheap. Now, Boston isn't exactly the easiest matchup in the world, but when you're removing pieces like this in the rotation and you're putting a lot more on these guys' shoulders, I think it's kind of a domino effect, and naturally they're going to be relied on more. Same rule is going to apply for Jermichael Green. I'd expect him to get some more run and usage. Um, and then these guys down here that are guards, like an RJ Hampton, a uh, Campazzo, could be interesting options as well. And then, of course, the guy at the top, the Joker, Nikola Jokic, at 10-7 becomes a very good play because he's the one they rely on the most overall. The more pieces you take off the team, the more the, the usage is going to funnel to him. Uh, so, you know, he becomes a very good play, um, making a lot of sense. Taking a lot of pieces out of this rotation, a lot of usage is going to be going to these guys. Uh, definitely going to have interest in them. Now, of course... Monte Morris would become a great play as well if he's in, but if he's out, we're going to be it's going to be funneling down towards these other guys, like I said already, like Compasso and RJ Hampton. So one more piece of news to keep an eye on. On the Boston side, no Marcus Smart. So we got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Kemba Walker. These are the big three. You know, these are being my main targets. They're priced up the most for a reason. So these are the three guys I'm looking to on the Boston side. And then um, if Daniel Tice is out, that is going to open up more minutes and or usage for Tristan Thompson at 3-9. So he becomes a very good play as well if we find out there is no Daniel Tice in this one. And you could be looking to a Robert Williams um, as well at 3-1. I would really like him uh, because this guy can fill it up real quick when he's out there. And he just gets the minutes. So 3-1, he would make a lot of sense as well if we find out that these guys are going to be real short-handed. Tristan Thompson, 1, Robert Williams, 2. New Orleans taking on Memphis. We got right now, this game comes in with a 230 over under with a half a point spread in favor of the Memphis Grizzlies. So good pace game, expected to stay close. All the above. Jaron Jackson Jr. continues to be out. DeAnthony Melton, Josh Hart's listed as questionable. We got Bain out. So um, I think it's pretty simple who you're going to on the Memphis side. It's Jonas Valanciunas and John Morant at the top here, 7'6 and 7'5. Um, both guys getting a ton of usage on this team. And you get the uh, point guard center combo as far as the pick and roll effect if you're looking to play both. However, if I'm picking one, I'm looking to play JV. I know they're different positions, but if I had to pick between the two of them, I'm playing Jonas Valanciunas over John Maria. Um, and then Brandon Clark, Kyle Anderson, Dylan Brooks are all kind of clumped together here. I do like Dylan Brooks a ton still. They continue to be out with a couple guards in this rotation that were taking away some of his minutes. And this New Orleans team has been dreadful defensively, so this is a great matchup for Memphis. Um, Kyle Anderson and Brandon Clark would be the last two guys 
Kyle Anderson receiving around 30 minutes a game. Brandon Clark finally returning here. Um, played only 21 minutes off the bench. Um, so whether he's back in the starting mat lineup or not is going to be interesting to see because they're kind of easing him back in the action. So keep an eye on that one. And then Grayson Allen at 4-7 continues to be a great play as well with no Bain and no Melton. He's continuing to see around 30 minutes a game, putting up 29, 33, and 22 DraftKings points. Has seen his price tag increase, but still he's literally got 40-point upside at that price tag. Um, and then if we find out that Josh Hart's out, maybe we could be taking a look hard look to a guy like a Nikhil Alexander-Walker. But really, it would give Eric Bledsoe the biggest bump, in my opinion, at 5-2. We've seen him play 32 and 31 minutes the last two times out. I think he continues to see a bunch of run here, and he would become an intriguing option, even better option if there is no Josh Hart. Pay-up options. On the New Orleans side, I'm looking to Zion Williamson at 8-2. I will continue to not play Brandon Ingram. I prefer Zion Williamson greatly until Ingram starts to really prove that he does have consistent upside. I will say he has, you know, out of all of his performances recently, the last two, he has kind of shut me up in that aspect. He's put up 46 and 45 drafting points, so maybe starting to turn a corner. However, Zion Williamson is, you know, $100 cheaper, and he's putting up the same numbers, so... If I'm picking between the two, I'm going to continue to play Zion. You can, of course, play both. I just will prefer Zion if I'm picking one of them. And then Lonzo Ball, lastly, looking very good recently. It's just getting some minutes cut into with guys like Eric Bledsoe and these other guards. But he's always got the upside. Just know it's a little bit of a risk-reward play with Zion every time you go there. Toronto taking on Milwaukee. We got a 235.5 over-under with a 5.5-point spread in favor of the Milwaukee Bucks. Expected to be a close one. Expected to be fast-paced. Top total on the slate. So we're going to have a ton of interest in this one, not to mention the rotations are very solidified. So OG Anunoby is listed as questionable in this one. If he finally returns, which it doesn't look like he's going to because he is listed as doubtful. Um, so I'm going to talk about this as if he's not in. Chris Boucher, Norman Powell continue to be in the rotation, continue to be great plays. Kyle Lowry, Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet are going to round up the rest. Then they have a bunch of pieces down low that don't really get as many minutes. So it's very easy, which is great for us. We know Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam, and Kyle Lowry are the ones we're looking to. If I'm picking between these guys, I'm literally taking the cheapest ones just because they all have similar usage, similar minutes. I'm going to take Pascal Siakam. I'm going to take um, Kyle Lowry, and then I'm going to take the two pieces in Norman Powell and Chris Boucher. However, you know, if you need a shooting guard and your lineup construction fits in 8-2, Fred Van Vliet makes a ton of sense. So, you know, Kyle Lowry doesn't have that multi-positional eligibility, but you can play Norman Powell in that same spot, and he's a lot cheaper with similar upside, so I do think that he makes a lot of sense as well. Chris Boucher, same rule applies. 6-6 six, six, and 6-8, six, really like both of those guys. Um, continuing to see minutes with no OG on a newbie. Chris Boucher is a little bit unpredictable in his minutes sometimes, so... You could get burned there, but if he gets minutes, he, this guy's production is ridiculous. So, uh, And then on the uh, Milwaukee side, I'm going to continue to love Chris Middleton with no Drew Holiday at 8K. I think that's too cheap for his upside. He's only put up 26 and 33 DraftKings points the last two times out, but this guy can very easily put up a big game as we saw last time on the 8th where he put up 63 DraftKings points against Denver. That's the kind of upside you're talking about with this guy. Same rule applies for... Um, Giannis Antetokounmpo, obviously, he's a lot more expensive, but in a close game, every time it's going to be a close game, I love Giannis. Well, oftentimes, it's really more of a matter of whether it's going to be a blowout than it is the matchup for Giannis. And, uh, yeah, he makes a lot of sense on this slate today when this game is expected to stay close. And then, Dante DiVincenzo at 5-4. Uh, it continues to be a great play with no Drew Holiday as well, putting up 34 DraftKings points last time out, 5-4, very good fantasy point per minute producer, and has seen a big bump in minutes. So those are the guys I'm looking to in this game. Los Angeles Lakers taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. We got LeBron James listed as questionable. Anthony Davis is out. He's expected to be out like one to two weeks, so that means that LeBron James is about to go into takeover mode. And he gets a great matchup today taking on this Minnesota squad. It is a 7.5 point spread in favor of the Los Angeles Lakers, so maybe blowout concern, but I just don't care. I'm going to absolutely love LeBron James here. Um, I'd expect him to just see his fantasy production rise to extreme levels, and I would not be surprised to see him more up in the 11K range very shortly, similar to Giannis, so take advantage while you can at this 10-1 price tag. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, Malik Beasley continue to be great plays with no D'Angelo Russell. They're going to soak up all the usage on this Minnesota side. 
Now, they don't get the best matchup taking on this Los Angeles Lakers team. Very good defensively. However, with that being said, there is no Anthony Davis, as mentioned. So I do think that's a matchup increase bump to Carl Anthony Towns. I'm going to like him more now that there is no AD. And I'm going to like a few of these Los Angeles Lakers bigs now that there is no AD. Montrez Harrell, Marcus Saul both make a ton of sense. Montrez Harrell specifically, a very good producer, fantasy point per minute. And he's a very agile center. So in a game where they're going to need someone to get out in the arc guard, Carl Anthony Towns run around a little bit with this Minnesota side. I think he makes a ton of sense in this one. And then Marcus Saul at 3-9, you could definitely be looking to as well. Um, and Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma is all the way up to 7K. Um... For good reason, though. We've seen him put up 31, 30, 37, and 30 DraftKings points, and now there's officially no Anthony Davis for a while. He's going to continue to take on a bigger role on the team as well, and I can't say it enough. Minnesota sucks defensively, so uh, definitely going to be liking these Lakers guys today. Portland taking on Oklahoma City. Uh, right now, we got a 225.5 over under with a 7.5 point spread in favor of the Portland Trailblazers. The Oklahoma City side continues to be banged up. They got no Shea Gilgis Alexander in this one. Um, no Maladon, no George Hill. The Portland side's without Rodney Hood and Harry Giles, which could open up a few more minutes for some guys on that their side. So Derek Jones Jr., Isaiah Roby, Afridi Simmons down here. We got Mike Muscala on Oklahoma City side. Um, Justin Jackson. So maybe some intriguing value plays in this one. Now, of course, at the top, it all starts with Dame Lillard at 9-7. Um, continuing to see a bunch of usage with no CJ McCollum. So he's an intriguing option. Now, if I'm picking between Dame or um, LeBron, I'm going LeBron all day. They're very similar priced. So if I'm picking one, I like do like LeBron, but it's definitely possible to play both. Al Horford at 7K. Continuing to get a bunch of usage, putting up 43 DraftKings points last time. He definitely has 50 DraftKings points upside if this team continues to be shorthanded. Diallo, same thing. Portland's been very bad defensively, similar to Minnesota that I just discussed. So these guys make a ton of sense. Um, they're shorthanded. They have a lot of usage going their way. So I like um, the core pieces in this Oklahoma City rotation. So you're looking at Al Horford, Diallo, Baisley, uh, Dort, Kenrich Williams. All of these guys make some sense. If I'm picking my favorites, it is those three that are priced up. They're priced up for a reason. They have the best production. Um, Baisley, Diallo, Horford. And then if I'm looking to go on the cheap end, hopefully we get some more minutes out of Isaiah Roby at 4K and or Mike Muscala. Both these guys can make sense, but I think that if Al Horford's in, we're not really looking to go here. I think their minutes are going to be capped out a little too much um, for my liking. So Dort's really where my, my uh, interest cuts off. And I do have interest in Carmelo Anthony on the Portland side. This guy's looked really good recently. If you've had any chance to watch some basketball, uh, Carmelo Anthony really turning it up, and he gets to take on his former team in Oklahoma City. A little bit of a revenge narrative, so at 5-4, I do think that he can provide you with plenty of upside. And yeah, Gary Trent Jr. continues to be a great option as well at 5'7". That's who I'd be looking to in this one. Um, and as Cantor, on the Portland side, you definitely can play. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, Al Horford defense. Al Horford's pretty good defensively, so. Um, but fantasy point per minute and minutes-wise, he does make sense as well. Brooklyn taking on Phoenix last game on the slate. Right now we got a 231.5 over under with a three-point spread in favor of the Phoenix Suns. So expected to be a pretty decently paced game. Big bump up for the Phoenix side for sure in this matchup. You could be look, taking a hard look at Devin Booker, Chris Paul, DeAndre Ayton. All three of these guys have tremendous upside in this matchup taking on Brooklyn. Um, so, you know, definitely would advise that you take a look at these guys on the slate tonight. And... On the Brooklyn side, it's pretty easy because there is no Kevin Durant still. So we're looking at James Harden, Kyrie Irving, uh, and Joe Harris. James Harden and Kyrie Irving obviously are the two primary ones we're looking to. Um, Phoenix hasn't exactly been the easiest matchup this year, but it just doesn't matter when you're getting that much usage between two guys. So much on-ball handling, so many sh shots. Um, you got to love those two guys in this one. And then, you know, as mentioned, you got Jeff Green. Bruce Brown, and uh, Joe Harris with no Kevin Durant. So, But honestly, I'm not really going to waste too much time on the value plays in this game. I think it's pretty straightforward. You're looking to play the studs in this one, not really get cute with the fillers. I will say Jay Crowder, Frank Kaminsky maybe on the Phoenix side makes some sense. Um, specifically Jay Crowder. He has tons of upside at 4.8, so I do like him. And that's pretty much where my interest drops off. We've seen Dario Saric come back recently. That's going to cut into the usage of Frank Kaminsky. 
as they're working him back. That's just more minutes being taken out of his um, you know, capabilities in the rotation. So it's just Jay Crowder for me down here. You could play Mikel Bridges, but I liked him a lot more when there was no Jay Crowder. Now that Jay Crowder's back, they're sharing minutes a little bit. Bridges is still a valuable play. It's just he's a lot more expensive than Jay Crowder down there at 4'8". So with that being said, got to give you guys my lock of the night. Let's get into it. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be LeBron James. I think I made it pretty clear in the video how much I like this guy with no Anthony Davis in this matchup taking on Minnesota. But if I did not, I cannot emphasize it enough. I am going to make it a big priority of mine to be paying up for LeBron James tonight. I think if you don't, you're making a big mistake. And I think this guy is going to see his usage in fantasy point production really ramp up here, especially in this matchup taking on Minnesota. They don't have anyone that can guard LeBron. I would not be surprised to see this guy put up 70 plus DraftKings points tonight. And I absolutely love him at 10 1. one. I don't care. Would not be surprised to see him priced up more towards 11K very quickly here. Love LeBron James tonight. And there is no doubt in my mind that he is my lock of the night. So there you have it, guys. LeBron James, get him in your lineups. He's going to have a very big game tonight. I'm calling it. And that is all from me in this one. If you did enjoy the content, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. I would greatly appreciate that. And then don't forget to check out my Patreon package link below in the description. If you're getting real serious about NBA DFS playing night in and night out, I'd highly recommend it. I'm getting a lot of good feedback from my Patreons, winning money, withdrawing money at the end of each week. So love to hear it. Would love to continue to grow the community over there. When I get to 25, I will be giving away a free lifetime membership to one lucky winner um, for all sports. I do cover other sports as well, including NFL and MLB. So check that out, guys. Wish you all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.